Is Bethesda wasting Fallout? It's been a big point of discussion as of late. Is the Fallout IP being wasted by Bethesda? And I guess really now Microsoft is they are technically the IP owners. As it exists right now, we have Fallout 76, which is still getting updates, sort of. But for many fans wishing for more of that single player experience, there really aren't a ton of options for you when it comes to the Fallout space. So in this video, I wanna look at what you actually do have on the horizon. Some things that you may not know about with Fallout's future, but also the overall discussion on whether or not Microsoft and Bethesda are wasting Fallout. So when it comes to Fallout and its future, clearly Bethesda has or had a plan. Release Fallout 76 as a game as a service and continually feed it content and updates so you could keep the Fallout fans occupied and monetized. Which on paper actually makes a lot of sense. You could totally argue Fallout isn't being wasted at all because we do have Fallout 76, which is still getting updates. Just a couple of days ago, I looked at their recent PTS update, which gives us a look at the first batch of 2022 content that is on the horizon. But for me at least, Fallout 76, as of late in particular, has really just been a major disappointment. The game of course had release problems, but thankfully through updates and especially the Wastelanders DLC was really able to rectify that but over the last couple of months and really the last year or so, there's just been a huge content drought. There just really hasn't been a ton of content coming to the game at all. The game has been getting super good updates, but it's not really a ton of new things to do, just kind of establishing a good framework or adding in quality of life features. And as it stands right now with Fallout 76, there have been three roadmaps for this game and three years in a row, those roadmaps were not met. The entire last section of these roadmaps either were severely cut down with it not being nearly this amount of content, or even in some cases, some of that content just never came out or it's still on the horizon for some point in the future. And even though I know there's a lot of you that will likely enjoy Fallout 76 and perhaps are even just having a ton of fun with the other online features and the battle pass that it does add in, if you do take a step back and look at this from the lens of a traditional Fallout fan, it's pretty rough. We're going to have a roughly 16 month window from the start of 2021 and into 2022 where Fallout 76 only got three hours of questing content. That was Steel Rain in the summer of 2021. And although it was fun enough, if you were playing that at a reasonable pace, it again took you about three hours to play all of it. This coming after Wastelanders, where Bethesda had a major talking point where they were building out tools to be able to add questing content faster in the future. After Wastelanders, we've only ever gotten six hours of quest content for Fallout 76. Three hours for all of 2021 is pretty rough. If you're somebody who actually enjoys questing, which I'm definitely in that category, and I know a lot of other people are also. And even still, that was one of the biggest content drops for Fallout 76 in 2021. Fallout 76 has been getting a lot of solid updates, as I mentioned before, a lot of that being on the front of quality of life features and even the groundwork for future features like Fallout Worlds, hopefully leading to mods. But in general, if you look at the amount of actual content the game has gotten in the past year, it's pretty rough, it's pretty abysmal. There is still some hope on the future. Mod support was confirmed to be coming to the game around 1300 days ago. So that is coming at some point, right? And we saw expeditions on that 2020 roadmap. Those are also coming. We don't really know when, hopefully in 2022, but even that is technically not even confirmed. It seems like it could be plausible. That's our early 2023 release. Both of those features could be huge for the game, could be huge for traditional Fallout fans, but there's been a lot of waiting and not really a ton of content in the meantime. Overall, Fallout 76 for me has continued to be a game with so much potential, but the lack of content is just a huge burden here. And don't get me wrong, the base game and in particular the Wastelanders expansion are amazing. Fallout 76 is worth buying and playing right now, but if you're somebody who's trying to consistently play the game, things are definitely fairly dry. And the future is somewhat uncertain we're not getting a lot of content in Q1, just a limited time event. And as of right now, we don't even know who's running the game as the project lead left in 2021, and we are not really aware of who replaced him, if anyone. And the reason I bring this up first and foremost is because to me, it seems pretty clear Fallout 76 was intended to be the solution, intended to be that outlet where the Fallout IP wouldn't be wasted. But as I just described, at least for me, it really just hasn't lived up to its potential. Although that wasn't the only solution. On the other hand, and perhaps the most confusing situation yet is actually with Fallout 4. Fallout 4 is still a massive game, and in fact, as I'm recording this video, Fallout 
Fallout 4 has more players than Fallout 76 on both Steam and more importantly on Xbox. Fallout 76 came out a year later on Steam, so most people play it on Bethesda.net, so these numbers not necessarily as telling. The Xbox number is pretty huge. They released at the same time on Xbox, both are on Game Pass, and yet more people are choosing to play the older Fallout game right now, compared to the one that is still getting regular updates. And this big mystery and confusion around Fallout 4 is with Creation Club. Fallout 4 has a ton of completed items in Creation Club. They were working on this Creation Club content as recently as early 2021. So about one year ago, people were still working on stuff for Fallout 4's Creation Club. We just saw a massive amount of content released for Skyrim, and seemingly there is a similar amount of Fallout 4 content just kind of sitting there, paid for by Bethesda. Bethesda pays for this content up front, but otherwise just collecting dust with seemingly no intended plans for release or we don't know when this will come out. The last Creation Club stuff came out at the end of 2019. And this is for a game that is one of the most played on Xbox and Steam right now. There are a ton of people actively playing Fallout 4. Seems obvious here. Release the Creation Club content, people buy it, you make a ton of money. Why wouldn't they do that? A lot of speculation around this Creation Club lawsuit and that could be the reason or a factor. The lawsuit argues that people who purchase the season pass should get Creation Club content for free. But Although that could be a huge issue, you have to imagine there's some kind of workaround. Skyrim's Creation Club managed to continue, and perhaps selling things with Fallout 4's Creation Club in a bundle or re-releasing the game as a new version or something could work. It just in general seems super odd that Bethesda has all of this completed content for what is at least as of this week their most popular Fallout game and they're not finding a way to release that or at least they haven't for the past couple of years. But that's really only one half of the coin as on the other side there's also a pretty massive handicap when it comes to Fallout on Xbox specifically and that is the Fallout 4 mod support on Xbox is really limited by the 2 gigabytes of mod space limit compared to Skyrim Special Edition that has 5 gigabytes of mod space. This means that even though we are getting some of the best mods for Fallout 4 ever, like Sim Settlements 2, which released on Xbox, they're only barely able to get these projects to fit at this point. And let's say you want to use Sim Settlements 2, you're going to be really limited in what other mods you can use because the vast majority of your mod space is going to be dedicated to that project. The mods as a future to continue the sustainability of this game is significantly hindered for Fallout 4 on Xbox. And that's why we're seeing Skyrim on Xbox be so much more successful, not to mention it just got yet another re-release. But even before that re-release, Skyrim on Xbox was still more popular than Fallout 4 on Xbox. This mod space limit is a major factor in that. Skyrim on Xbox just has way more and way better mods to download. But as I mentioned how they could increase the mod space limit, but it would require wiping everyone's mod lists on Xbox. Definitely seems like between this Creation Club content, the mod limit, there's got to be some kind of solution here with a re-release, a free update, or something on the horizon. Yet we still haven't heard or seen anything like that. And even just as a super small but pertinent point, Fallout Shelter Online was a sequel to the hugely popular Fallout Shelter. Fallout Shelter Online has even more features, but for some reason is an Asia exclusive. There likely is a decision behind this one, there's a reason they're not bringing it to the Western markets, it's likely designed for the Asian markets more specifically, but I know a lot of people would love to play this, including me. And it does feel like a missed opportunity that the most popular Fallout game ever by player count got a sequel, but it never actually released in the countries that played so much of the first one, or at least some of the countries that played so much of the first one. I think one of the big reasons so much of this becomes so frustrating is the IP has so much potential, the Fallout name, the Fallout world, and what you could do with that, whether it be on the front of just remasters with console mod support. Let's say a better looking Fallout 3 that's 64 bit and maybe even has some other upgrades and mod support on consoles. That would breathe a ton of new life into that game, blow up the modding scene, you get a ton of additional attention and new mods coming to it. And with the thousands of employees between Microsoft and Bethesda, it just seems obvious like that would make a lot of sense for them to work on. Or even if you want something a bit more hands-on, full-on remakes. This of course is the big one a lot of us want. Whether it be remaking Fallout 3 or New Vegas, adapting them to Fallout 4, or even 
even 76's engine, which would be even cooler, or even Fallout 1 or 2, converting them to a 3D world space. That'd be huge and super exciting projects that a ton of people would want to experience. We get a look at these with some of the mod projects that are currently underway doing all of that, and you just wonder, why isn't Bethesda doing it? And the grim part about this is, it really does seem like nothing is coming. We hear time and time again how Bethesda, and specifically Todd Howard, isn't really into remasters. Or even more recently, how although they do have a one-pager on what Fallout 5 would look like, but it seems like Bethesda still plans to keep Fallout game development internal. I don't see, look, Fallout's really part of our DNA here. Yeah. We've worked with other people from time to time. I can't say what's going to happen. You know, we have a one-pager on, on Fallout 5, what we want to do. Um, but I, I can't really say today uh, or commit to anything what's going to happen when other than Hey, our cadence is Starfield and then Elder Scrolls 6. Now, on one hand, this is just what we have publicly, so there is some hope for the future that perhaps Bethesda isn't actually wasting Fallout. At the very least, we are definitely getting a Fallout TV show, which recently got some updates and should be beginning production soon, which is very exciting. This, in addition to more Fallout 76 updates, is something that will exist around Fallout, so there is going to be some kind of content, but there is also this secrecy aspect to all of it. Outwardly facing, Microsoft and Bethesda Game Studios have remained pretty adamant that Fallout will be done at Bethesda Game Studios and there aren't plans for remasters, but maybe this is just what they're saying and they're already working on something. Or maybe some other studio is already working on something. There's job listings at Bethesda Game Studios that describe some kind of unannounced new project on the way. That's at Bethesda Game Studios specifically. One YouTuber said previously that he had heard how In Exile was working on a Fallout game. Two unannounced Unreal Religion 5 RPGs from In Exile, and I've heard at least one of them is Fallout. Yes, I've mentioned this multiple times over my own videos and podcasts. This was something I was told some time ago, and remember, Brian Fargo and company were the ones who actually built up the Fallout IP, eventually selling it to Bethesda, yes, when they were known as Interplay. He had some correct predictions in the past, although I take that with a major grain of salt overall. Zenimax Online Studios, the people behind ESO are opening up new physical locations, doing a ton of hiring and working on some kind of new game. Maybe with all their success behind the Elder Scrolls Online, they're going to make a more proper and true to form Fallout MMO or some other studio in Microsoft or Bethesda working on something Fallout. The unfortunate reality is this is all pretty unlikely or super Fallout. It really does seem like Bethesda's plan was Fallout 76 to be the gap filler, like ESO was the gap filler for Elder Scrolls. It just seems like on the Elder Scrolls side, things worked out way better. ESO gets significantly more content than Fallout 76, and even if there is another studio working on something Fallout, that game would have to be several years out at minimum, at least if Microsoft's involved. They only purchased Bethesda in early 2021. It's going to take several years to actually build up and start developing a game, which means it could be 2025 before we even see something from another studio if it is done by a Microsoft studio. And overall, to me, this just really feels like a shame. I was hopeful for some more investment into Fallout 76 and more content following the purchase by Microsoft. Although now as we're approaching one year into that purchase, we're not really seeing much more. In fact, I would say the past year was one with less content than any other point in the game's history. Perhaps things will evolve in the future, but if you're looking for that traditional single player Fallout experience, I think your best bet is just mods for Fallout 4, at least for the next few years, and even some of the cool mods coming out for Fallout New Vegas. Well, that said, hopefully you guys found this informative. Those are my thoughts and opinions on this situation overall. But with that, I do hope to see you all next time. Later.